public safety. What is going on in America? I have three black brothers. They're so innocent. <laughs> Sugar, spice, and everything nice. And also understand how communities of color have had to deal with unfair law enforcement practices over the years. You know, bring people together. Like statutes that we were able to um, able to enforce. Uh, you know, it was um, it was for me. Yeah. What is going on in America? I should I can answer my own question. Cause it's the same stuff that's been going on since before we actually had rights. It's really sad that we are in a time where we have to worry about this. But in reality is what we've always worried about. There's always some downtime, you know, Downtime in society, downtime in the government, downtime where black people can have just a little bit of peace. Just a little bit. Maybe, I mean, there's never 100% peace because there's always, you know, the non-black people, I'm not gonna just point out white, they're non-black people that just can't seem to allow us to have peace. Nowhere, in no point of our life. We can go to the nail shop, be discriminated there. We can go to freaking the grocery store. Be discriminated there. Though discrimination is, you know, not legal. Because we are black. Because we've gone through this. Because it's not abnormal for us. It seems as the norm. You know, I've never experienced anything so close to home until, was it 2014? Correct me if I'm wrong, when Michael Brown was shot and killed in the middle of his street. Because I lived in St. Louis, Ferguson was like maybe 15 minutes from my elementary school where I know people who went to my elementary school, who went to high school with Michael Brown, who knew him personally. And that was the closest, closest to home situation that made me open my eyes to the fact that this can happen to anybody in my life. Though he was not in my life, I consider him to be in my life because we, we grew up in the same place. This systematic racism is not limited to anybody. It's not limited to any shade of black, any gender of black. Though you see our black men going faster at higher rates and it's sickening. This goes back all the way back to Emmett Till when he was accused of whistling at a white woman. That, that same mentality of a white woman that feels as though yelling about her fears, yelling about her being uncomfortable because of some little boy's skin yelling about I'm gonna tell them there's an African-American man threatening my life not being in control in a, in a situation and getting her way is seen today they're known as the Karens but that's you know comedy black people have come up with for years like y'all think Karen is <laughs> Karen is new baby Karen been around since I was little Karen um Becky and you know, Ashley, <laughs> any white person that has to butt in the business of a unbothered black person, a uh, black person minding their business has been called, you know, a common white, white person's name because that's just how we cope. But it's so, so ridiculously scary thinking about all of this because I have I have three black brothers. They are, they are growing up seeing this, learning that it's not safe for them. I have black men in my life who own businesses, my father, my uncle, 
who serve their community every day. <laughs> and at any moment, somebody can come into their business and ruin their lives. <laughs> My brothers, they have to grow up. Not feeling safe going to their schools. Not feeling like they fit in. Being ignored. All of this is going on and they walk in the halls of the schools like it's not going on because they are surrounded by predominantly white environments that don't talk about this stuff. I have a little sister. She's growing up the way I grew up, going to predominantly white private schools because in the era is area is the best education. My parents can't help trying to put their kids in pretty good schools and it being all white. That's just how the system has been set up. But I have siblings and I get choked up every time I think about them because they're watching this on TV. <laughs> My sister is six years old. She's in a pandemic coming to fruition and come and go. She's seeing black boys and girls and men and women on TV being killed by somebody that they feel that they should be protected by. I have three black boys as brothers, all in different stages of life. One eight, one, one eleven, and one thirteen. <laughs> All, all in the stages of life where they can be racially profiled. <laughs> and one probably already going through it because he's tall, he's dark skinned. He looks like the black boy that causes trouble. One who has already gone through it. <laughs> One who was being protected by his big brother who went through it. <laughs> and they're so innocent. <laughs> brothers this weekend and just talk to them about it because I just I just feel like it's necessary as a grown woman that can explain it and that can warn them about what they need to look out for and I also want to be able to take that moment to talk to my like my middle brother about what happened to him at his um, after school care and what he did to defend his little brother and how he was racially profiled and how nobody said anything about it and how it was just swept under the rug it's so sad <clears throat> excuse me it's just so sad and I'm, I'm so fed up because not only do black men period go through it, black women go through it. I grew up going to private schools and all of my private schools until I went to high school were all black. So my first predominantly like white school, I was in North Carolina. I was, you know, the token black girl of everything. <laughs> My graduating class had two black people in it. I was the black boy, Justin was the black girl. I mean, I, wait, what? <laughs> I was the black girl, Justin was the black boy. Shout out to Justin. <laughs> Hope you're doing great. I grew up 
in that environment from 10th grade or 9th grade, I would say, because, well, 8th grade was the first time I ever went to school with white people, but the school was predominantly black. Ninth grade was the same school, but then I moved to North Carolina and then it was like, you know, total culture shock going into only white and people being shocked that I was in all the honors classes because I did great on my interest. Like you had to have, take an interest exam <laughs> to go to this school. I was in all honors classes. There were no, you know, words about me actually being in it because they would never say that to my face. I wouldn't say there were no problems with race. There was just no problems while I was, while I was there or through my experience. But I can attest to the fact that um, there were no, there was no support, you know, black support anywhere because everybody was white. So we all just kind of made our own little support. It was, I think it was like five of us in high school, like throughout the ninth through 12th grade, it was only five of black, five black people. I'm gonna sit here for a while. Dang, it's been 15 minutes already. Um, and I mean, I was, of course, like I said, I was the token black girl in the class, token black girl on the volleyball team, because I was the only black girl on the volleyball team. Um, I met my sister for life, Nina, my sisters for life, Nina and Sonia. They were um, the original black girls of that school, and I came and we became just like best friends. I loved them to death. And we were the only two on the, on the team, and we ran the team, and... Um, but yeah, just growing up in environments where we're surrounded by white people that could easily flip the switch. My mama told me before going into these environments that, you know, you can make friends, but don't rely on them because all in all, and at the end of the day, you are still black and they are still white and you're going to be black when they come shoot all the black people, you know? So it's sad that we have to prepare our kids in situations like that. And I want to talk to my family about it, like what's going on and how we can, you know, get involved in making things better. Y'all, this is leaking all the way down my back. It's fine. <laughs> We're all fine. I just want to say, y'all, just be safe out there. I know I didn't really say much in this video, but I just wanted to come and just a voice that I'm not ignoring the situation. I'm just taking a, I've been taking a break from social media. If y'all follow me on Instagram and um, Snapchat, Snapchat, I haven't been on Snapchat in so long, but Instagram and TikTok and stuff, whatever. Um, I've been taking a break because it got to be super toxic for me and I started comparing myself and getting really sad all of a sudden. And I decided about two weeks ago, two Mondays ago that I was going to stop on social media for a little bit. I don't know how long, just until I can get back to myself back to realizing my purpose and my worth you know comparing myself online is not what i do so i'm taking a break but i did want to come on here and just talk about everything and it's just sad y'all okay this is way too much i had to like What's going on here? Oh. Um. But I did just want to say, y'all, uh, just stay safe out there if you are protesting. I don't know if I'm going to indulge in the protesting just because of the violence that's going on. New Orleans, I'm, I'm super impressed. They were walking onto the interstate from Tulane Avenue all the way onto whatever interstate that was. And I was so impressed and I was about to cry. I was getting off work and I was like, bro, America will hear us, if anything. Um, I'm not here to rant about, you know, the different things going on with the riots. And I'm not here to talk about how some of non-black people are treated like Coachella. But I am here to just say, y'all just be safe. Um, I am here to just put my voice out there saying that I do know what's going on even though I'm not super vocal right now on social media I'm just taking a break from social media I am 
I am feeling it. I do want to encourage everybody to donate to any causes that are available with the riots. I mean, if it's the only way to be heard, that's that's just what has to happen. I'm not encouraging it. I'm not discouraging it. I'm just here to say this is where we're at. <laughs> this is where we're at. And I uh, hope y'all enjoyed this video. I don't know if it's a video you should enjoy, but <laughs> this I just wanted to bring y'all video in my raw form i am being black right now soaking my hair i'm about to uh it's wash day even though i started my wash day at five o'clock this is not smart um it's wash day look at that water yo this was clear this was clear this is so disgusting it's fine i'm gonna be clean later on so i send all my condolences and prayers to the families that are affected and the environments and communities that are being affected <laughs> we are the community that's been affected so pray for us as black people in this time pray for the pe the activists out there putting their lives in you know harm's way in the cities that are that are rioting right now i pray that new orleans stays peaceful um we're doing pretty good right now i haven't really heard much about anything i did hear a lot of helicopters last night and i wasn't i am not up to date because i don't have cable and i don't really like watch the news so i gotta i gotta update myself you feel me? um but like i'm saying i'm rambling but stay safe y'all thank y'all so much for the support um of black causes black businesses black life yes we do matter and i'm here to say that um if we don't we don't say loud and proud that we do matter they're not gonna ever believe us and maybe that's what why the white riots are going on because we've been saying it saying it for so long it's time to yell it it's time to you know force it to let them know we matter so don't do us yeah so i'm about to get out this water because it's nasty <laughs> it's nasty um yeah I'll uh, see y'all in a couple um, weeks, maybe. I don't know. I don't really have a consistent upload schedule right now because I'm busy. But I'm here. I'm living a life as a black nurse, doing what I got to do to make a difference. Thank y'all for all the nurse support throughout the pandemic, but that don't even matter no more. Black lives matter right now, okay? Okay. Coronavirus don't even exist no more. Y'all see all these people in groups? Ain't nobody sick. Well, no, nah, I don't know the numbers. I don't know, but... Yeah, 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 yeah. Um, I need to get out this water. Y'all want to see me get out the water? I don't know. But I look at my legs. I look, I look stupid. Okay. Oh God. My hair is probably so dirty right now. Look at my, my poor hair. I'm so excited to wash it though. So excited. Guys, thank you guys for watching. Black Lives Matter. I'm gonna retwist my hair now. Look at this. Disgusting. Oh yeah, that lint. Looks like it came out. I've been really struggling with lint, y'all. My hair is so long. It's crazy. I've been locked for three years. been locked for three, three years. Look, I used to have like a lot of white like lint, which I'm about to get some more lint in it right now while I'm looking at it. But I used to have a lot of lint in my hair and that wash literally just extracted most of it. It may be a little bit still in there and like the white stuff that you're seeing is just the, um, the dirty water that's like dripping like this right here but um i'm doing pretty good look at my hair yo look at my hair look at my hair look at my hair all right see y'all in a little bit i thank y'all so much for watching be sure to talk to me in the comments and follow all my social media below and i will see y'all in my next